Hello, welcome to Columbus, Ohio. I am Rachel Miller with Color Splash. Sitting here working on tiles today. I um, recently got a delivery of the most amazing bisque tiles. Now, I, I thought they were coming from Portugal, but I just noticed a little stamp on it that says China. So I don't know what's up with that, but it doesn't matter because these tiles are absolutely spectacular. I found them at Blick.com um, in lots of different large sizes, all the way up to 12 inches, which were on back order. So I wasn't able to get those, but I am on a wait list for the 12 inch tiles. The reason I love painting on these tiles so much is, uh, if you've seen any of my videos, you know I live in a really old house where nothing is level. And so the longer paint is sitting wet on a canvas, the more likely it is for it to end up wonky and shifting and just distorted as it dries here. So I found with these porous tiles, the paint dries very quickly and it just kind of gets locked into place. So the way it looks wet is often exactly how it looks dry. And I mean, who doesn't like that, right? We all want that kind of result. So I'm kind of obsessed with these tiles and looking forward to getting my 12 inch ones although I know they're gonna be quite heavy to try and hang. Um, anyhow, I just did a tile that ended up with uh, all kinds of jewel tones in the finished product, which was not what I was going for at all. So I'm gonna do a do-over. I'm trying to come up with kind of a light, girly, a color palette for my soon-to-be sister-in-law. We were talking about it on the phone last night and she just loves sea glass colors and pinks and like the aqua blues and whatnot. So take two. So I've got my pillow down. This is a pearl base, which means that there is satin enamel as well as acrylic in this paint. Okay, and one thing I don't tend to do is add any water to my uh, mixes with satin enamel. Now you can play with all different ratios of satin enamel. It doesn't take a whole lot to create reactions. It's just the more you add, the more aggressive those reactions are going to be. But if you add water, that sort of fights against the chemical process going on between the oil-based and the water-based paint. So if you have to water it down, try using a little Liquitex pouring medium instead of water. Okay, so let's see what color to start with. I think I'm gonna start with just the neutral gray color by Amsterdam. was not so hot. There we go. Got the weirdest song in my head. I don't know if you guys have seen the movie uh, Stand By Me from the 80s, but there's a scene where they're hiking along the road singing some really weird song, probably from the 60s or something. I'm not sure. And I cannot get it out of my head. I don't even know the words correctly, which makes it even more comical. Okay, next I'm going to put down a color called Parchment by Liquitex Basics. I will almost never do a pearl-based painting without using one of these off-white shades. Um, they add a whole lot of texture and dimension to the pearl cells, so I tend to always utilize that because I like having that extra dimension to my cells. 
my paints are a little heavy they are kind of sinking down into my base which isn't ideal but it's not a catastrophe either um, I could choose to water down my acrylics but I know I'm gonna be okay leaving it alone so the next color I'm using is one called Persian Rose by Amsterdam it's just a really really pretty soft pink color really like this shade I know this is a shade oh I did not mean to put that much of it down well thankfully this is a color she likes and there's gonna be quite a bit of it in there now I think I'm going to grab one of my favorite all-time colors by Pebio it's called iridescent copper and this color just shimmers like nobody's business. It, and when it's dry, it almost looks like you have a penny, like it stuck in your paint. It's actually really cool. I love this color. And I think it looks really gorgeous with either dark blues or shades of pink in particular. Moving on, I am going to lay down a little bit of primary magenta. I think it'll be a complement to that iridescent copper and to the Persian rose color. I could even use a little bit of permanent red violet. I think I'm only gonna do that on two sides. Then I'm gonna come in with a little bit of blue. This is actually Turquoise Green by Amsterdam. And I think I'm only gonna do this one on two sides. Then I'm gonna come in with my Brilliant Blue right by the turquoise green. And I'm gonna follow that with a tiny bit of Prussian blue. And then I think on the pink side, I'm going to add a twinge of this vermilion orange by Amsterdam. And then I'm going to come in with this custom color that I'm calling parakeet on the blue side. And that is simply um, Amsterdam olive green light hue mixed with um, a little bit of Artist Loft White. I think I just got paint on my nose, guys. <laughs> and this is just a little bit of Payne's Gray. I'm keeping that on the blue side. And then on the pink side, I'm gonna come in with a little bit of Naples Yellow. And then I think I'm gonna be ready to put down my cell activator. Okie dokie. Sorry about my reach. Oof. There we go. So this is kind of a little wonky. Let me shift it back the other direction. Try to get my flower centered. I'm going to pour a little bit of cell activator down in the very center of my piece. I did way too much last time, so I'm going to try to be a little bit more conservative this time. That should definitely do her. I'd say that's about like a 50 cent size piece, maybe. Okay, now I'm gonna grab my blow dryer and on the cool low setting, I'm gonna blow this out and hopefully get something real pretty and feminine. I'm just starting in the center and kind of spreading that cell activator.
nice. Oh, I think I'm going to like this tile. Okay, I kind of over blew the corner a little bit, one corner, but I think it's going to be okay. I really am liking everything else I'm seeing, so I'm just going to ignore the one little spot where my pearl cells are just kind of going every which direction doesn't have to be perfect. So now I'm going to grab a toothpick and I'm going to help bring a bunch of little pearl cells come, in, come out of this black area. Because right now I've got a giant black hole which I would like to shrink dramatically. So I'm going to take a toothpick and a paper towel and I'm just going to poke into the cell activator and then wipe the toothpick off. And what I'm doing is gently scratching the bottom of the tile with the toothpick, which is breaking the surface tension enough to allow, sorry, there's a piece of dust about to land in the center of my activator puddle. This is breaking the surface tension just enough to allow pearl cells to come forward. And you know, if I let this go and didn't use the toothpick, this would actually start to occur all by itself. But the reason I like to do it with the toothpick is because I get to choose where those pearl cells occur this way. I get to pick where they're gonna live. It gives me a lot more control over the final product. I am really fascinated by the array of colors I've gotten out of this piece. And definitely eager to see what colors these pearl cells I'm making right now are going to be. I, I wish you guys could see what I'm looking at right now. There is an electric purple with blue ring cell just floating right here in the center of the activator pool. Super cool. So as you can see, every time I scratch, a little white dot pops up. And that is just literally the paint below the cell activator coming to the surface. And each of those little dots is going to continually grow until it becomes a pretty sizable pearl cell. Kind of filling in this section right here. I mean, this is a little bit of a process and takes a little bit of patience, but it's also so much fun because you don't exactly know what's gonna pop through each time you scratch. So I, I love this. I mean, I think we all do fluid art, not just because it's so beautiful, but because there's such a surprise element to it, right? Like, no matter how much we plan, we never know what the final product is really going to look like. And that just has, like, such romance to it almost. Like, there's such a cool component to this. Oh, I had a pearl cell just pop up on its own. Little guy. Wow. 
wow, I just kind of created a twin by accident. Twin pearl cell. Cool. So I'm just simply going round in a circle, closing up this black void. I call this series my black hole series, and I think the name is pretty self-explanatory. And it is always amazing to me how far the cell activator actually stretches because I really didn't put down that big a pool of activator, but it's such an oily substance that it really just spreads across the paint so aggressively and I don't know, it's interesting to me. So I can see that my activator is getting thicker the closer I get to the center. So I'm not gonna be able to make a whole lot more of these cells, but I am trying to get one more row where I can. Wow, guys, some of these cells are outrageous. I am so excited to show this to you. Oh, I got another set of twins. Huh. That's pretty cool. I think it's the way my um, toothpick is bent at the tip. It's creating these double pearl cells. Probably shouldn't mess with that area. All right, I just want to get... If, come on, buddy. Just want to fill in that one little gap. I can. My activator is quite thick in this area. So it may not cooperate. Nope, I think that's going to be it. Oh my goodness, guys. I cannot wait to take you in to see this tile. This is really cool. I love the way the colors came out in this one. Again, this was not at all what I had in mind. <laughs> it never works out that way, I guess. But it's so cool. Okay, let me bring you in for a closer look. This is so cool. Let's see. Look at these colors, guys. Wow just all kinds of pinks and oranges and that copper color is just peeking out. I can see my parakeet color. Look at those pearl cells. Are those not gorgeous or what? I mean, this is such a fun tile. I really thought I'd have a lot more blues in here with all the blues I use, but what is really coming forward are the coppers. And then those pearl cells are just gorgeous. Just beautiful. Let me lean my light in so you can look at the coloration. just beautiful. I, I love in particular when there are lots of white pearls and then the colors sort of pop forward. And I don't know if you can see, but the, the dimension I've been talking about in pearl cells, you can see that parchment color with sort of the white in the center that's what I mean by creating extra dimension in the pearl cells. Instead of them being more flat and white, 
many of them have that parchment color to them, which just adds more body and dimension, gives it that juicier look, which is what we all are chasing. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. This has been another fun tile to create. Um, please remember to click like and subscribe. This is a brand new channel. Sorry, I'm fumbling with my light. And it's really hard to get a new channel off the ground. Really hard, especially when you don't have much of a social media presence. And I certainly don't. So please, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for all your support, as always. I'm Rachel Miller with Color Splash. Happy painting, y'all.